This is my 1998 318 IS manual uh, BMW. About six months ago the heater sprung a leak so I bypassed the heater and now the time has come to attempt to replace the heater core. Now, this is a right hand drive car which means drivers that's on right drive on left of the road like you get in Japan, New Zealand, Australia, South Africa where there was a maid England, Britain. Um, the left-hand drive version, such as in Russia, Europe, South America, North America, is almost exactly the same, I think, just with certain items swapped left to right. Uh, and I think for purposes of replacing the heater, automatics are pretty much the same too for most E36s. Um, the job took a while. Nothing about it was particularly difficult. I could do the whole thing either sitting in the front seats, one or the other, or kneeling in the passenger's foot space with the door open. Um, I didn't at any stage have to contort myself into weird positions under the dash as I was uh, fearing. So it just took a bit of a, took a bit of a while. While I was editing all this together I found a few little gaps so I came back and shot the odd pickup shot after. Uh, so if things suddenly appear or disappear in the background that's yeah, just a continuity error. I've tried to put everything into the right sequence. So here's a new radiator core for my E36 318IS BMW. Also a bag of O-rings from eBay. These are for E46. Hopefully they'll include the right ones for the uh, E36 heater. So, first disconnect battery. Go. Second, remove gear knob. According to one of the manuals, you just pull with 90 pounds of force. I've already pulled it so it comes off easy this time. It seems to have some cable attached, I don't know what that does. The other end of the cable is either broken off or I just pulled it off. No idea what that is supposed to do. Now this thing is just soft rubber. It just unplugs, pulls out and pushes back in after. Just reach under and push out the hazard warning switch. There we are. And then pull the lead off there. And now this wiring connector here just pulls straight off the back of the switch. It's very stiff, I was afraid of breaking it, but that's what it does. And off it comes. Now the centre console. There are two screws. There's one at the front under the hazard warning switch and one at the rear under the ashtray. So, pop the ashtray out, just pull, actually, essentially, and it comes. And there are two screws holding the, hold the ashtray holder in. Actually plastic screws into plastic plugs. You remove both the screws and the plugs. You just remove the screws. The plugs will come. 
This will just pull out with the ashtray holder when you lift it out. Just plastic screws. Then you just pull, it comes out. Complete with those plugs to save. We're safe. Uh, if you take out both ashtray holders, keep them separate because they are very similar but not quite identical. They will fit in the wrong slots but uh, badly. So now there's the console rear screw. Front one and the console should, should lift out. Now there's a, light, a couple of little light bulbs, one under the front ashtray, one under the cassette box, which you might want to remove. The cassette box comes out, just lifts out. <coughs> pull off from there. And the front ashtray holder is the same deal as the rear one. Um, that light you can leave in place and pull off just as you lift the whole console out. So, two screws and that. Lift off the handbrake Cover. It just pulls off. It just clipped into place. There we are. Lift this up. Remove the light, which is plugged into the front ashtray. Pull this bulb out, and there you are didn't need to take that out. Didn't need to take those out either. It doesn't hurt to lift these out just to make sure there's no other sneaky screws holding it. Right, now the console here. This is in two pieces. There's multi-information display, so-called, and the uh, little box here. And it's split along the line there. And the top part, you're supposed to just reach in through a hole here and pull. And it is supposed to pop out. Which does. On my car, it then gets stuck against the edge of the lower half because there are little lugs in the bottom of this that engage with a ridge on that and make it extremely hard to get out. It took me a lot of fiddling to do it. Um, other videos and the manual suggest it should be a lot easier than that. So I don't know how this is different. But anyway, after a lot of wrestling, I managed to get it out without breaking anything. So, this is how it's supposed to go. Once you've got this out, there's the cable on the back. 
There's a little lever here, or sort of loop of plastic that swings over to push the plug out. And it's held by a little latch of plastic just there. Push that in with your fingernail. Then the lever slides over and it all works beautifully easily once you know the neck. So push that in. slides over and actually pushes the plug out of the socket. So you can see the lever there on the side. It clicks back into place held by that latch. To replace the lever in the back, or to replace the plug in the back, the lever has to be down, just plug it in, swing the lever up, and it clicks in beautifully. So now this comes out. A couple of plugs to disconnect off the back of that warning light, and off the back of the uh, um, cigarette lighter socket. Well, there's a light there, it pulls out, and there's a red lead, red and yellow, and a brown. I'll do it in a minute. And there's a little plug off the back of that, I guess just pulls off. So yes, those did just pull off. So then we have the window switches, which apparently just push out. So we'll give it a try. easy. Okay, just disconnect the plugs. Get easy. Yep, so that just pulls right forward and this whole thing lifts up. Like that. So this centre piece has to pull hard forward to get the thing off. And it leaves that. Easy when you know how. Now with the lower dash panel, just three screws. There's one there. One there. I had to prise a little plastic cover off that to get in it. And one down the bottom there. down at the front, you, know, you can see the clips that hold it that side, and somewhere, I think that just clips on, just clips on to something down there, I'll worry about just what when I come to put it back. Okay, so it all came out. OK, glove compartment screws. There's 
And in the top corner there. One under that cover there. That little cover. I think one down there. And the same on the left hand side. So I'll undo those and I think it then just pulls out and there's a couple of leads needing undoing. So we'll try it. So finally the last couple of screws on the glove box. Which are right under here. Somewhere about there. And somewhere about here. There's a little plastic cover prizes off of that. And the same for that screw there. So, after you've taken these four screws out, uh, uh, this top panel should apparently just pull out. both hands on this. And after a bit of gentle levering with a couple of screwdrivers, it slides out like that. light. This thing is a switch operated by the door that presumably switches the light off so we take care not to break that. Now up above the light apparently there is a 10mm uh, bolt that holds the glove box in so we have to take the light out. If you look you can just see a gap in the side there, in which you can insert a screwdriver. And lever. And down it comes. Easy as anything. There's a similar gap in the other side. And then out it slides. not to break off the tab this end. Right. And then you got to get this plug out. It wasn't that easy because just there there's a little tab fits into a hole in the surround and locks it in. Helps to jam a small screwdriver in like this while you pull on that middle plug and then if you're lucky it will come out. where it was and there we are out right. now up above where the light was there is a screw with a 10 mil head you need a fairly thin socket usually a quarter drive one because the screw is a bit offset from the hole gets on it okay. And I'll put the camera down while I unscrew it. Uh, the next 
this thing is the torch socket which just unclips at the sides and pushes through. And finally, a couple of screws at the bottom here and here, which are a rather awkward angle, but apparently can be undone. So finally the last couple of screws on the glove box, which are right under here, somewhere about there, and somewhere about here. They just need to be slightly slackened off to slide the glove box out, I think. Yeah. But they also hold the panel underneath. And now the whole thing just slides out. And that was the BMW porch socket from the side here. That was from the centre light, which we already unplugged. Bingo. And with the glove box out, this bottom panel here just clips and pulls out. Next, the centre console, which doesn't appear to be fixed anywhere. All the manuals seem to have forgotten about it at this point. There is a 10mm nut there, plastic covered, which we will unscrew. Ah, there are a couple of screws up in there. Unscrew those. There's another screw. This strut just there, which seems to be holding the whole centre console panel. So I'll undo that as well. And then out she comes. The whole trick is knowing which screws to undo. There are those two up under there. And the nut at the back there. And the screw and the centre strut there. And the support strut there. That appears to be the lot. Now there are six other screws that hold the two halves of the front centre console together. Those. Those. And 
bones. Which are in there and there. But due to them being behind these brackets, when in place, and therefore totally inaccessible, I don't think you can ever take this off without, ever, without taking the whole thing off. I don't think you can take them off separately. Well, we'll take the temperature controls out. And just reach in behind there and push and they unclip. I've done that already. It takes a fair push but they do just snap out. And there's a couple of typically complicated connectors to take off. Oh, yeah. And there's a clip to push in and then that swings over. Just like the one on something else I've forgotten. See, push clip in, and then that swings over. Cool. And the other connector. Just pulls out. Right. Put that in the same place. Now the radio. These two little clips. Flip up. To reveal a couple of tiny screws. Well in this case the Torx T10 seems to have done the trick. Now apparently you just keep unscrewing and unscrewing till it won't go any further. So what you're actually doing is unscrewing this, winding this back and in wind it the other way this will come out and secure the radio. So you wind it back and in until the point where the radio just slides out. And a 2.5mm Allen screw will also fit. So that aerial just pulls out. This just pulls to the side as hard as he can. So there's like that. According to the diagram on top of it, on top of the plug, you're actually supposed to lever it with a screwdriver. So there we go. I've already taken it off and put back lightly once. There we go. It takes a big amount of leverage because it's pulling out all those pins. And apparently that is what you're supposed to do. Wow. Okay, so that's the coolant pipes which go in and to the heater matrix in there. This convenient bracket, thank you so much. BMW hiding them. This bracket appears to only attach down there. Doesn't appear to be anything attached inside here. Goes across, attaches there, and there, and then down to a bolt there. So, I'll see if I can take this bracket off. And the 
there's the nut there also that I missed first time round. Okay, medium length one that came out of there. Short one. Let's see, focus. Short one came out of that end. Long one came out of there. And presumably there. Just so I can remember how to put them back. P. So. What that was holding up mostly was the airbag. Thank you so much. So this is like holding a live bomb as far as I'm concerned. We'll put it down very, very gently. of devices in near my face at any time. Right, so now this lever, this whole bracket here, with luck, will come out. With a bit of a bit of juggling which I'll uh, have to switch the camera off again for. Yeah so this corner first comes out and then that well right wasn't as hard as I expected so now you can see those pipes finally. Right. Oh and the airbag cover pops up like that held by a strap so it presumably doesn't hit you in the face when the airbag does. Uh, but that'll come in handy when I come to put the airbag back in place, I think. I can put the bracket in first, then... Yeah. Yeah. Now this little switch panel here pops out, you just reach in behind and push. And I'm going to disconnect the switches and put the panel on one side, just because I can. And it gives us a couple more holes to see through. It's probably not essential to the process. It gets one more little bit of stuff out of the way. And those plugs at least came out easily. Just... Yeah. Now this... The case and it's tight up against this bracket here, which runs across and holds the steering column in place. Now, by undoing the bolts on this bracket, four of them, this bracket tube thing, we can move it back an inch and give more room for the heater case to come off, which we will do. So Let's see if we can loosen up this right hand bracket enough. Take out the bolt at the bottom. It's a very tight fit in there, so take out the bolt the other end. So there's the other end. Quite easy to get on to. So now there's this bolt up under the steering column, or in front of the steering wheel. Now if I take that and the corresponding bolt the other side out, and flop that adjuster down to loosen the steering column, 
Hopefully I'll get enough wiggle room out of this bar to make a little bit of a difference there. I can't undo the stupid security, shear off security bolt they put there. So I'll just leave that. We'll see how this goes. So now this can slide up and down with the wheel. Doesn't want to come out much, but that might be just enough to let this squeeze past. We'll see. So now we can see the heater pipes where they go into the heater. You can see the front casing of the heater. So what we basically do, unbolt the heater pipes, which you have for spillage, and do the heater front case and somehow wriggle it free of the rest of the dash. Take out the heater matrix, stick a new one in, do it all up again. Simple, hey. So now we've just got the heater pipes here. Got the front cover of the heater box, which goes all the way across to there. And we'll have to undo and wriggle out somehow. Uh, to start, I'll just unclip the These leads here, I'll just loosen them. And disconnect the two uh, temperature sensors, which will then pull out, I think. I'll disconnect them first. They're just held by a couple of little levers. I'll have to put the camera down to do that. As it turned out, while I was pulling the, trying to pull the connector off, the sensor popped out. Have to be very careful with the delicate end of the sensor there. And the sensor just plugs in with snap rings, snap thingies. Now I'll disconnect the wiring from it and put the sensor in a safe place. And that was a stiff plug to pull out. So it just pulls out like this. Fairly firmly stuck in. So now we carefully uh, yeah. carefully remove that and we'll take that plug off. Connector off too. I think they're identical, but I marked them upper and lower, just in case. So now this cabling here is held by a plastic clip on the left, which I shall have just detached. A spring clip in the middle there, metal spring clip, and another plastic clip on the left hand side. So I'll just prise the spring clip off and then detach the cabling and 
hopefully put it to one side. Take a bit of levering with the sorted screwdrivers. But eventually it came off. Will come off. Will have come off. Did. see down there a very good looking drain from the heater case. That is undoubtedly why my feet didn't get all wet when the heater sprung a leak a few months ago. Pay to check after we get the front off, pay to check that that is not blocked by any sort of rubbish that's managed to find its way in. Yeah, good on you for that, BMW. Sorry about the racket in the background. Lawn mowers. Now, there are reportedly seven screws on the heater case. One there. One there. One down at the bottom. So we can actually reach them all with a screwdriver. Be good if that happens, we'll see. So now the front of the heater case is loose. So now all we have to do is wriggle it out past here, preferably without taking the entire dash off. Of course, with this bolt at the bottom of the strut undone, that's the bolt that also secured the crossbar, there's a bit of movement in the dash, which is going to help. Uh, inside, aside from all the nuts, so the screws on the, uh, on the heater cover, which I've all taken out, there's also a clip you can just see it on the left hand end there, I'm pointing the light straight at it. And I presume there's a clip the other side which is completely out of sight. Uh, maybe visible there, I can't tell. Anyway, those clips snap up and release the top of the, uh, the, top of the heater case, a uh, heater cover. So. Now I'm going to take that bracket off. I don't know what it does, but it will get one more thing out of the way of getting this lid out. Well now, the heater cover seems to be quite happy to go out that way that direction except it would heat the hit the steering column and I'm not removing that. As for coming out to the left it'd be okay except that this tab on the heater here keeps hitting this rubber bush here. So one of those two things has to go. I'll make another 
concerted attempt to try and unscrew that rubber bush. Otherwise I might cut, just cut that tab off. I can't see what it does. That's the uh, last resort. Well now, since that rubber bush, rubber mounting, appears to have a function, and this plastic tab on the bottom here has no function that I can see other than getting stuck behind that when I try to take things out leftwards. That tab is going to get very carefully cut off. Carefully so as not to damage the seal that's underneath the rim of the heater. I've just got a screwdriver jammed in there to keep this strut pushed back. Give us room. So now, before we can slide this out sideways, there's this flap which is getting in the way. This end, and I can see it. Yeah, but a similar flap the other end. And they're on this steel cross shaft, which has to come out before the heater element does anyway. So I think this flap needs to be vertical. Let's have a look at the other side. So here's the corresponding flap at this end. It's activated by a link. motor thingy there. Right, now to get this out, which I eventually did, these flaps have to be vertical. Because when they're sticking out horizontal they won't let this thing get past. Now to get them vertical I had to temporarily reconnect the uh, temperature control thingy there. Reconnect the battery, switch on the ignition, and set it to the um, demist. And then those went vertical. If I switch off, There they go, back horizontal, right in the way. <laughs> How clever! Not. So this is the thing that caused us all the grief. You see the two clips on the top. Sometimes it helps to see what you're dealing with, so you know how to... It helps to get it out. So this is where I cut through it. Used a hacksaw blade, which I broke the end of, but they're cheap. bit untidy. I used a hacksaw blade to saw through it because I was afraid that it might be brittle and crack if I used cutters. Actually it's not brittle at all. But uh, I have to be careful. I did cut a little bit off with cutters. You have to be careful not to 
go too far into this, and I actually almost did. Well. So anyway, that's off, and it doesn't seem to have been missed. So now all that's in the way of the heater matrix, which I am pleased to see has been leaking. It had of an anticlimax if it was okay. Um, what's in the way of the heater matrix is this cross shaft here. That link there. The link prizes off, top and bottom. And then, so I've read, you just have to pull the heater housing enough for this to snap out of its housing. just pops out, pops out of there, and then apparently <sighs> same thing with the other side. Yep, same thing the other side. Pulls out of there. Yeah, so that's the cross flap. Conveniently labelled L and R, in case you forget which way around it went. So finally, we get to undoing this. Lots of towels for spillage. 8 mil socket, and there are three bolts in there. Mm -hmm. And now we just pull this off, I guess. Boy, it doesn't want to come. I can see that moving. Now these pipes are a bit of a struggle to pull out. They sit in holes at the end of the heater core with uh, o-rings around them and I guess the old o-rings have got pretty attached to them by now. I don't want to pull too hard because I haven't loosened the front end of them so I want to put a bend in them. Uh, so this is a diagram of the heater pipes. They go from here with o-rings round to the front bulkhead here and through into the engine compartment. Um, I haven't loosened this bracket here so I don't want to tug those out too far in case I bend them. So now these pipes are quite well stuck in the heater by the old o-rings so I just used a screwdriver to very gently lever them and break the break the seal, break the stickiness. Now they should come out just far enough. Because I haven't undone them at the front there, so I don't want to bend them just far enough to let us pull the heater out forwards. So I'll use both hands for that. So that kind of helps to see what you're dealing with. This new heater. 
I should be able to get some sort of hook thingy in around there and pull that forwards. Let's see how that goes. So what we need is some sort of hook thingy to go in there along the top and pull forwards. So I made some sort of hook thingy from a bit of 2mm rather rusty flat steel and we'll see how that works and then pull uh, simultaneously pull these out slightly so they don't get caught in their holes and we'll see how it goes ok a bit of a struggle this part of the housing there is getting in the way this pip here will also get in the way too. Also have to be careful not to break off this activating lever from the uh, motor that drives the flaps. So eventually I just pulled very hard on this bit of plastic housing, deflected enough to spring up over the end of this here, and this came out. God knows how I'm going to get the new one back in. <laughs> 